The Albert Einstein Arts Hall of Fame gladly inducts class of 1972 artist and arts educator Robin Kuntz. Robin could not be with us this evening, but would like to share a video with you. Well, hi, everybody. Uh, my name's Robin, and I'm sitting here in, the, in my greenhouse at the Funny Farm in Western Oregon, and you're sitting where you're sitting, uh, and I'm honored and somewhat confused, and I'm sorry I couldn't be there. This time of year is pretty busy. Hope this works, and I, I'm, I've got a slideshow for you, and I'm happy to share it also with students because I, I think it'll help show. There is a, it's just a way to make a living uh, being an artist and in children's book world and with a lot of perseverance uh, as they'll see that I've gone through and, and flexibility um, you, you can do it if, if it if it interests you and, and you and uh, want to give it a shot maybe you'll get some ideas oh and then I want to introduce Jeep before I sign off here come here Jeep this is Jeep and uh, he's a big help around here he's my he's my anxiety dog I'm gonna get one of those things for him and have take him on an airplane saying he's my anxiety dog or whatever they call it anyhow yeah here's another reason it's hard for me to leave right now we're kind of in the middle of a big project that's a yurt that we're building and we're writing a book about it so here's me in 1973 a couple of months before I dropped out of college high school was great and by my senior year, I tested out of everything and I could spend most of the day in the art room with, with Chiron and Craig Hankin. Here's Morgan Fowl, who was our teacher at the time, and we've stayed friends over the years until he finally died. He loved that I could do watercolor. All I could basically do is copy other people who are doing watercolor. But in spite of that, that's what he was mostly encouraging me to pursue. And I came up with enough of a portfolio to be accepted into the Maryland Institute College of Art and I went there for a year and two weeks where they wanted me to do stuff like this and I just kind of missed doing the stuff I used to do for the yearbook and I had other reasons that I finally walked out that day but it was mostly I didn't see a way I going to make a living doing art so I moved to California after working for a year and I finally got a job as a production artist at a newspaper and I started learning a ton of stuff about how to make a living as art artist and that's my uh, first gig I ever got from McGraw Hill Publishing in California and that's the second gig I got Marvin Denmark who's been my partner now for 41 years he drug me up to Oregon that he wanted where he wanted to live and we did some freelance work we did an Oregon winery calendar there's some, some kind of serious art that I did for that and sort of hated it and then I also started producing uh, Christmas tags and greeting cards using the uh, my favorite style and I started entering poster contests this one actually was kind of a consolation prize and I did one for uh, a literacy um, program for the local schools and at that point somebody said boy you you've got the kind of style where you should write and illustrate children's books and and my experience with children's books looked pretty much like this I wasn't much of a reader as a child and I was a comic book reader but I did the research and I collaborated with a friend on one story, that's one of them. I also wrote my own story, which was probably the worst thing ever written, called Samuel Grows His Own. But I had enough pieces of art to, to put together a, a, a real funky brochure, and I sent it out to about 30 publishers in New York City, and I got 17 interviews. So I flew to New York, stayed with my brother in, uh, in Chatham, and they taught me how to get to the town and I met all my appointments. I met one editor of all of them who said, I like your pussycats, so do me a book about pussycats and I'll publish it. And she did. And I wound up working with her and another editor for almost over a decade. We did a lot of picture books together. I started writing, I started writing uh, early readers for them. And then I also started picking up jobs for um, educational publishers doing uh, funny artwork for them. They like my style too. I did a couple of pop-up books when I expanded out to other publishers and things were going okay until about the mid-90s when 
publishing industry really changed and illustration work for me pretty much dried up. But I also found out I loved writing and I said, well, what am I going to do now? I still got to make a living. So I started writing nonfiction books and my focus was on nature because that's always been my deepest love. And, and here's my first series I did about animal uh, skills and I've done articles about uh, uh, evolution. By the way, I couldn't use that word in this article, but that's another story. But I've done tons of books, nonfiction books. I, my motto is I'll write about anything unless I don't want to write about it. Meanwhile, Marvin and I still work together. We published our own book about his suspension bridge over Wildcat Creek. And this is, that's my favorite photo from that book. And we've been encouraged by the sales of that book. So we're working on a another one about how to build a, a wood frame panelized yurt, so stay tuned for that. Marvin designed this logo for our uh, Facebook page, it's pretty cute. He still likes to draw too. I'm still dabbling in illustration, I do, I tried my hand at collage of a concept books collage, haven't sold that. I also came up with a graphic novel series for very young children, uh, Fractured Fairy Tales, and I haven't sold that either but I keep trying. A um, friend of mine kind of roped me in to do a needlepoint design, so we're gonna launch a little Etsy page for that kind of stuff. And I still write picture books, but now other people illustrate them, and that's fine. This is called Bug, and it'll be out in 2019, illustrated by Amy Proud. So here's me in my studio in about 1990, when I was illustrating, and pretty much here's me today in my studio pretty much just writing and I got no problem with that. I have a lot of computers and a, and a cup of coffee or whatever's in there. So that's my story. Thanks so much you guys. I want to thank the people that nominated me and somehow got me inducted. I started to say indicted. So here they are. Here's Miriam and me in uh, 1972 hugging the sob and we we have no idea what was so funny that day, but we sure laughed a lot. Thanks, Miriam. And here's good old Jeff, Al Shaneen Shannon. And apparently he nominated me too, and I appreciate it, Jeff. It'd be fun to see you again. And then, of course, Uncle Bob. Sorry to embarrass you. This Bob Gallagher, photo by Jeff Shannon, um, hugging Trisha Nixon. <laughs> So anyway, that's the end, and that's the end of my story, but thanks to you guys for watching and for the, for the induction, and have a good afternoon or evening or whatever the heck it is you're doing. Bye.